I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. I got a question from one of you guys today about dealing with phones and cell phones, business phones, when moving to Nicaragua for home-based business and life in general. So this is an area that's always a little bit complicated. And I've owned a phone company for most of my adult life, most of my entire life, actually. And uh, I think I can answer a few things. There's some concepts of phones that people tend to miss. Phones are very easy once you understand how they work. So let's explain that right after that bump. All right, today's question comes from Andrew O'Neill, and he says, Hey, Scott, could you touch on phone numbers and service? Currently, my wife and I have two phone numbers under an eSIM. We will be planning to start a bookkeeping slash tax business, and we'll need to be speaking with U.S. business owners potentially daily. I am thinking that we might get a virtual number through Skype and pay to have a service from Nicaragua to the U.S. Absolutely not. This is completely wrong, but we're going to get to all that. It seems like we will need to change both our current numbers and services when we move, because otherwise, why would we pay for two numbers and service in the U.S.? and the same in Nicaragua. That sounds crazy. What do you do? All right, so let's start with some high-level things because we have to kind of define a few different service information pieces here to be able to have this conversation. So the first thing is understanding that business phones and cell phones are two different things. Cell phones, let's start with that. Cell phones are a vestige, but one we have to have. So there's no problem with having one. It's not a bad thing to have. We all have them, right? Mine is right here. My really sweet iPhone 13 mini that you can't get that size anymore. And it makes me really angry. Okay, so <laughs> that's what I want is a 16 mini, but I know they're not going to make one. Um, when you're talking about cell phones, that is one discussion. Cell phones make calls directly through the local cell carrier. It doesn't matter who your service is from. They have to make the call through the local tower. This is how cell phones work when it's a cell call, right? This is a computer that goes in your pocket and it has the ability under normal circumstances, if you have a SIM card or eSIM, which is just the same thing, it is able to connect to a local provider and make a call. If you're roaming, you're still making that call through a local provider. It just bills through your provider. So if you have AT&T and you make a call here in Nicaragua, it is Claro here in Nicaragua that is making the call, not AT&T. But Claro bills AT&T, AT&T bills you, okay? So you will always make the call with the, the tower provider that you connect to when you're using a cell phone. So cell phones have locations, right? They have a location by tower. They know exactly where you are. They have GPS. They have all these things. They know exactly where you are, and your calls are based on where you're calling from. So you have these complexities with cell phones where you have to have a SIM, you have to have service that will work from whatever tower you're connected to, and then you have a number connected with that SIM and a service connected with that. So there's all these moving pieces. So if you're coming from the United States, presumably, but maybe you're coming from Canada, well, you said U.S. business, you have T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. These are the players in North America. Of course, if you're on Verizon, just drop that and move to a quality provider, they, you will never be sorrier than if you try to use Verizon internationally. AT&T, it can be done. You'll just pay a little bit extra. T-Mobile works great. Okay. What do I do? I keep a T-Mobile number because when I'm in the United States, I want to be able to just make calls. Also, T-Mobile works worldwide. There's only a handful of countries in the entire planet that T-Mobile doesn't just work. When you show up, you can make calls, get text, send emails, get internet, all those things. It's slow, it's nothing special, but you have unlimited data anywhere in the world and you can make calls, you just pay for them if you're gonna do calls or text. Don't do calls or text, this isn't the 1990s, don't do that. But you have access to all that. But your WhatsApp, your Telegram, your Signal, your Apple Messenger, all those things work over data, they're all there. Also, anytime you connect to Wi-Fi, then it doesn't know where you are and those things work anyway. That's separate. But with T-Mobile, that's a separate discussion entirely. With T-Mobile, we can go anywhere in the world. So we're not giving up our T-Mobile. That would be crazy. So we just put it on the lowest plan that we can, and we have that service, and that's something worth paying for. Anytime we're in the U.S., Canada, or Mexico, we are in North America. T-Mobile considers that all one market, and we have unlimited usage at high speeds. Anytime we're outside of that, we have unlimited usage at slow speeds for data, and we can pay per minute for calls and text, or pay per text, however you want to look at it. So that's very easy. So yes, we absolutely keep that. We then use uh, prepay here in Nicaragua. Why prepay? Because it's cheaper and it's easy. 
Okay, good enough. So there's only two carriers, and you're not the only person who asked a question about phones. Only, I don't know, minutes? Yeah, 12 minutes after Andrew asked this question, Lynn's Life asked uh, something similar. Phone carriers, best ones and options. So just to combine that in for her, she had a laundry list of things. This is just one little thing. But there's only Claro and Tigo. They're essentially identical. Basically, you pay $12 per month for really good service, and that's how it works. There's some details, like, yeah, you want to put an app on your phone to make the payments. I su suggest paying with a credit card. Don't do the pay in store unless you have to for some reason. It's cheaper by using your credit card on a phone. I'm going to do another video about why you always use credit cards when you travel or live abroad or an expat or anything like that. We're going to cover that. But uh, Tigo and Claro are essentially identical. If you live in a piece of Nicaragua where one has better coverage than the other, use that one. Otherwise, it's kind of random, right? Both have the same price within pennies. Both offer the same data, the same everything. So it's, it's impossible to tell them apart. I don't know anyone who can. One is red, one is blue. Pick the one that has a store near you or a color you like or something. And if you can find a feature that's like buried in their extra features that maybe matters for you, then that's fantastic, but I'm not aware of one. I'm on Tigo, but seriously, it's random. Now, if you're like me, it's not random for me, it's random just that it's Tigo. The reason that I want to be on Tigo is because my T-Mobile from the United States is partnered with Claro. So when I'm here using my T-Mobile service, which again is unlimited, I use Claro, but it calls it T-Mobile. When I am not on that, when I'm using the local service, it's on Tigo. That way, if Claro goes down, my Tigo keeps working. If Tigo goes down, my Claro keeps working. So effectively, I have both Tigo and Claro, but I have it through T-Mobile in the US for the Claro and Tigo here for the Tigo. So I have all that international roaming. I have all that American calling. I have all those, that continuity of life and two, two numbers to work from, two services and failover just in case there's a problem. If I ever travel anywhere, I'm covered. Like I'm so well covered. Yes, it cost me $12 a month more than I was paying in the United States for just T-Mobile. Granted, if you're never going to go back to the United States and you have no reason to have a cell phone from the United States, and trust me, unless you are, cell phones are for where you are, not where you're calling. So if you're going to be in a country, you're going to spend a whole bunch of time in Guatemala, then you should have a Guatemalan number because that's where you're going to get data and phones and all those things. If you're going to be in Nicaragua, you need a Nicaraguan number. If you're an American, you're doing work in America, you're doing everything in America, but you only live in Nicaragua and you never visit the U.S., you do not need a U.S. cell phone for any reason. If there's any part of you that feels you would need one, you're misunderstanding something. You would never want a cell phone from a region you are not in. Your phones are based solely on where you are, not where you're calling, not who's calling you. Okay, because cell phones are location-based. Now, all of this is about legacy phones, right? Here in Nicaragua, we use WhatsApp. We've moved on from legacy American phone systems, and we use uh, this modern infrastructure that is much more secure, much more robust, much more complicated. That is what we use, and it makes such a huge difference. But you can't always do that, right? I totally understand. But it's important to understand, we're talking about a legacy phone system that's specifically supporting a system designed in the 1800s by AT&T for uh, calling in the era before computers and before much of anything. Okay, so that's just an understanding. So your cell phones have this archaic structure where it's tied to a location, it is what it is. And that's how cell phones work. Once you move past using your cell phone as a phone, which none of us do, here in Nicaragua, I have Tigo service and Claro service for the purpose of data, not for making calls. There is no condition under which I would ever make a local call to a Nicaraguan number, unless maybe like a really extreme situation where it's like a government office and they only offer that. I don't think we've ever seen that. Nor would I ever call a foreign number ever using my cell phone. Never happen. It's just, it's just not a thing. Now, if you plan on never doing it your whole life, you have no other accommodations, and one time you need to make a call, yeah, maybe that's how you're going to do it. But under normal circumstances, if you're going to be making calls internationally more than, say, once a month, this is not how you do it. This is an emergency thing, not a this is my plan on how to do it thing. So this is for data, and this should be true anywhere you live. Even in the United States, you really shouldn't be making calls and text very often. Those are horrific technology fallbacks for when you're missing out on the modern world. 
I understand businesses do that, but you wouldn't do that from your cell phone. We're going to get to why, but that's an important bit of understanding that when we're talking about all these services, the only part you should be caring about is being able to get data on your cell phone. If someone is calling you, that is a different thing. Even though you can get service here, you don't want them calling you on this. And it's also worth noting, here in Nicaragua, we don't call people. Like I said, we use WhatsApp. When people say call me, they don't mean on the phone. Nobody means that. They mean WhatsApp. It's so ubiquitous, they think they don't have to tell you. But a lot of foreigners get confused because we're used to old-fashioned phones in the United States or in Canada or whatever. So we think they must be old-fashioned too because if, if we are, why aren't they? No, they're not. They're, they're advanced. It just is what it is. So they mean WhatsApp 99.9% .9 of the time. And we mean by phone most of the time, which is super sad because we don't have a ubiquitous replacement. We have lots of separate replacements in the US that have not standardized the way that they have here. So if you were to try to make calls, Tigo phones can only call Tigo phones. Claro phones can only call Claro phones under normal circumstances. So any business that wants to take calls, like traditional old-fashioned calls, has to have both a Claro and a Tigo number. So if you see old listings places, you will see two numbers listed, and you're expected to know the one with a 7 or 8 in front of it is Tigo, the one with a 3 or 5 in front of it or something is Claro. But that, And sometimes they say it, but that's why it's like that, because they never really mastered cross-carrier calls, let alone international calls. But they didn't need to, because by the time those things started, started to become a need, WhatsApp came along and the world was solved. Now we have free, unlimited, global calling that has no location, anything. It doesn't matter where the person you're calling is, it doesn't matter where you are. Everything's safe and encrypted. It's, it's, the degree to which it is better is so extreme that no one would ever go back and do the old thing voluntarily. So that is why it's like that. So as far as being here in Nicaragua, all you have to say is, am I going to be in Nicaragua enough that I need service in Nicaragua? Which basically, am I seriously considering moving there or staying there longer than several months? Absolutely no question, you need a phone here. It is so easy, just walk into a Claro or Tigo, Tigo store, say you need it, and they can get you a SIM or an eSIM. New iPhones only take eSIM, but they take a lot of them. You can have tons of services on your phone, and they're prepay. So if you're going to be in Nicaragua for, say, three months, but then you're going to move on, great, get it. That's only... Three months at 12, so $36, plus you pay like $3 or something for the initial SIM, but it's eSIM, so it's not like you have to even do anything. They just program it on your phone, and any time you're going to be in Nicaragua, just pay for five days, seven days, 15 days, whatever it is, prepay for, if, basically 15 days is like six bucks. So that's what I do. Every two weeks, I pay $6, and then I get more data than I can ever use, and some services are unlimited, so you're in great shape. You can do anything you need to do. And you can pay for it only as you need it. So when I'm here, if I'm not leaving the house, I don't worry about re-upping. I just put on my T-Mobile and I have data and it costs me nothing. I mean, I'm already paying for the T-Mobile in the US. It costs me nothing extra to have data in Nicaragua. If I want it to be fast, then I'll be like, oh, I'm going to be out of the house. I'm going to Managua for the weekend. I really want maps to load faster. I want, you know, I want to be able to do research faster. I might want to stream some videos and stuff. Then I pay my $6 for half a month of Tigo and turn it on. And then, you know, if I'm out or Tigo's about to, you know, expire and I'm doing something, I, whoop, another Tigo, good to go. And the exact same thing with Claro. They're exactly the same. Don't worry. Just pick the one that makes sense for you. Uh, if you're on T-Mobile, then definitely use Tigo. That deal works. That is fantastic for me. Such a good deal. Now, do you keep your T-Mobile or AT&T or anything like that from the United States? Only if you're going to be in a place where that number and service make sense. Are you going to be in the U.S. enough to have a number? Which, honestly, for us, we're there less than 30 days of the month, and it's absolutely worth having it because during those 30-ish days, 20 to 32 days a, a year that we're in the United States, we would be in sheer panic to not have a working phone for that, and it's worth paying for a year of service to have it. Your mileage may vary. Are you only going to be there for five days? The entire time you're going to be driven around by family members, they're going to have phones that you can use. Maybe you don't care, right? Maybe you want to get a prepay that you can pay for just one month or one week at a time in the U.S. for the time that you're there. That's an option, too. But you get numbers for where you are. Now, world travelers and definitely expats who move around to a lot of places, we are used to, like two years ago, I went to Guatemala. What's the first thing we all did? Got Guatemala numbers. Just go and get two weeks of service. That is a standard thing that people do the world over. Americans tend to be hesitant to, for some reason, get numbers in new places that they go to. But that's how cell phones are designed to work. If you're visiting a place, you get a local number. 
Now, Americans specifically because of T-Mobile and to a lesser degree because of AT&T do have the access to have a local service that works in a large area. So Americans have a tendency like me to be like, well, I travel all over the world. I don't bother getting extra phone numbers because I'm only going to be there for a few weeks. And even if it's only three months, ah, you know, what? I'll live with the slower T-Mobile and I'll get Wi-Fi most of the time. And if I'm renting a house, I make sure it has Wi-Fi and I just always have my phone on Wi-Fi and I don't worry about it. And that's okay. If you're Canadian or from most parts of the world, you don't have services that will do that like the United States. And so you have to get a number when you go places. So that's most of the world thinks differently. But even here with like Claro, if you're getting like their big service, not their prepay like I'm talking about, but get what's called postpago, uh, where you're getting a monthly service and you have to pay it, but you pay after you've used it, then you can get bigger service plans that give you like all of Latin America or all of Europe as part of it. So it's similar to the T-Mobile in that way and similar in price as well. Um, then you can get the same thing from here but we're so used to having different services in different countries, and then you get the best from each country and you can tune it as makes sense for you. We tend to go that way. Believe it or not, this stuff's a little bit complex just because there's so many options, but the basics are just this simple. Get the phone for the places you're going to be in, and with modern things like the iPhone or the multi-SIM, like some of the Androids just will take two physical SIMs, yeah, then you would want one for the United States and one for Nicaragua under most circumstances. With these, you can have more than 32. You may be able to have thousands. Literally, Apple was unable to tell me. They're like, no one's ever gotten so many that it was a problem. It won't be you, right? <laughs> so like, okay, cool. Anywhere you go. So when I travel to Belize, when I travel to uh, Guatemala, I plan to start getting eSIMs in a couple of the countries I'm in regularly so that I can just get, you know, if I'm going to be there for like five days, you just do a five day prepay and then have really good fast service for your five days and then no big deal. And then anytime you come into the country, boop, pay for your five days and you're good to go. Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, we're all basically the same as Nicaragua, same providers. You just get a number for each country and do that as you go. Once in a while, that stuff actually works out to your favor because some services like Pedidos Ja checks where your number is from. So if you keep a US number, they won't let you get service here. So you definitely want a Nicaraguan number if you're in Nicaragua. And in some cases that will work in Guatemala. Oh, you're just visiting from Nicaragua, you can order online. But in some it doesn't. So you may want to get a Guatemala number. And if you're just passing through for one night, that's unfortunate that sometimes those things don't work as travelers and that's, that's just an annoyance. So that is cell phones. And that should cover everything you need for your portable data in your pocket. It should have, just from that discussion, hopefully it is clear that when we're talking about your business needs, that absolutely this doesn't apply. Your cell phone should never be considered part of your business plan. Sure, it may be the device on which you receive the data that your business uses for business needs, not a problem. But this is not a business phone. That is not how it works. And that is an important thing for especially North Americans to learn because North Americans have a tendency to think in legacy terms and not realize that the use of legacy phones as the phones for business went away decades ago. And anyone who's doing that is paying a lot and getting way too little for it. Phones actually have a lot of power, even though they are still legacy, they're not gonna come close to what WhatsApp can do, but they can do a lot more than you think, and there's a lot of really important features. And anybody who thinks they're gonna use a cell phone as a business phone and do business with North Americans, instantly, the North Americans you're doing business with see you as not being a real business. They don't know exactly why, but they can hear it and something's wrong. Using a cell phone for business needs not as a data provider, that's okay. Using it as a business phone is similar to using a Gmail address as a business address. And before any of you say, but isn't that okay? No, it's clearly not okay. One, it shows that someone is incredibly lazy, and two, it shows that they're not who they say they are, at least you don't have a reason to believe that they are. You would only use Gmail because proper ones are free, so there's no money involved, they are crazy simple to set up, no effort involved, everybody, from North America for sure, should already know to always use them. And you should always, if you see someone using Gmail, Hotmail, AOL, Outlook, any of those freebie services as a business, immediately reconsider doing business with them because if they don't see themselves as a serious business, you shouldn't see them as a serious business either. That is a separate discussion. We have talked about that on other videos. I do have another channel where we go into that in depth, but this is not a, a ploy to get you to spend money. I'm telling you how to be free and do it correctly rather than being free and doing it recklessly. So when you use Gmail, it alerts potential customers or business partners that you're not serious and don't have a clue. Those aren't things you want to announce. 
Same thing, if you use a cell phone, it is readily apparent to people that you're using a cell phone and they can hear that something's wrong. The audio quality is terrible. You don't have the features that they expect you to have as a business and they can immediately tell that something isn't right, but only phone engineers can tell you why they feel that way and exactly what it is that they're sensing but it is super common to sense that. So don't do that, don't try to go down that path. That is instantly a problem. Also, before we get into what business phones are, uh, Andrew says getting a virtual number. It's not really such a thing as a virtual number. That's not a thing. There's numbers and not numbers. That's it. The idea that there's a virtual number is part of someone selling something that isn't real, so be wary of that. Uh, is the, he mentioned it in terms of Skype. Skype's a real phone system that will get a real number, so that's not a virtual number, obviously, because there's no such thing as a virtual number, but Skype is not, as far as I know, trying to scam anybody. Somehow, virtual number came into the parlance, and it's simply incorrect. It's a real number. There's no way to be more or less virtual. All numbers are exactly equal. And hopefully, when we explain how business phones work, that will become readily apparent as well. Okay, that's enough of cell phones. On to business phones. Okay, let's talk about business phones. Now, I'm going to do my best to explain this. Please try to, <laughs> I don't know, watch this a few times. And this is a difficult thing to explain. And it's important because it will change. If you can understand how phones work, then these things become really transparent. And as long as you don't know how they work, phones are magic and really difficult. So let's dive right in. So there's the phone system, right? There's this back end that is basically created by the government. It's not quite that simple. We're going to simplify some things. So I don't want a bunch of, that's not really how it works. There's a bunch of, there's a cabal of companies that put the, whatever. There is a government entity effectively that takes calls and connects them and, and switches and routes them all together. So when you pick up a phone and you dial a number, there is a central system that directs these calls. Now, if you're going to become a phone engineer, this isn't exactly how it works. But if you're not a phone engineer, this is how it works. And so those calls, they signal to this central entity and they determine where those calls are going to go. Now each country manages this themselves and the countries move calls between them so every country is a little bit independent so they don't all, don't all work exactly the same. The companies that handle this are called carriers and when you're dealing with your cell phone, we're going to go back to that, your Verizon, your AT&T, your Rogers, your, your Bell Canada, whatever, they give you your own extension. That means your own number. It's called a DID, a direct inbound dial number. And that number comes to your cell phone. You are the owner of it. And when you dial someone, it looks for the owner of that number and sends the call to them. And that's all handled by the government. Of course, the company that gives you your phone helps too, right? They're important. But this is all going through the government and being directed somewhere. This is happening on what's called the plain old telephone system. It is an old, old-fashioned system. This is ancient technology that is ridiculous in this era. It was ridiculous when I was young. So, and I'm not young, right? <laughs> like, this is a really ridiculous technology, but this is how it works. And when you're using cell phones, that's still how it all works. But when business phones get used, we don't have cell phones. We have a couple things. Business phones have a bunch of technical requirements. To be considered a business phone, you've got to be able to have multiple people using a single number. You've got to be able to have multiple numbers for a single person. You've got to be able to have systems like what we call IVRs, or phone trees. That's where, hello, press one for this, press two for, th for that, press three for that. You've got to have ways to hold people in a queue and have them hear something. You have to be able to ring multiple phones. You have to be able to do transfers from one person to another and back to the other. You have to be able to do call recording and other features. All these things are absolutely requirements for something to be considered a business class phone. They're not even remotely features. These are the basics. Anything less than this is just a consumer phone. And there should not be anything like that ever considered for a business. These things are so simple. And you say, well, I don't need it for it. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> it's just a requirement. But if you're going to be running a business for Andrew, don't consider skipping having a real phone system, right? It's not going to save you money by not having good things. Just like trying to do free email. Well, the free enterprise email is not free enough. I want the free crappy email. No, when most good things are really cheap, possibly free. So don't think of this as, well, this doesn't apply to me. This is too expensive. No, 
This is for everyone who might have a business and for a lot of people who aren't going to have a business but do want to have powerful calling from home. Now, you can do consumer stuff that also gives you a lot of power. That's fine, right? If you're a consumer, consumer stuff's okay. But in many cases, consumers should consider just using business services anyway because you often get better service, uh, more capability, better support, whatever. Okay, so the way the business phones work is one, there's still those numbers, right? One or more that are handled by the government. They have to be registered and assigned to your business, not to a person, to a business. This is where cell phones are assigned to a person. Even when you get business accounts, they're not business phones. It's a business account, but they're still giving individual people phone numbers. That is not how business phones work. You can have assigned numbers that are assigned to people, but it's not the same as a consumer assignment, right? It is not the vendor it's not Verizon, it's not at and it's not Rogers assigning the number to your person. The business assigns it. The business has however many numbers they want. One, 1,000, doesn't matter. They assign them. They control them. It's completely different. So when you have a business, you have a business phone system that has all these capabilities. And then, so importantly, when you're dealing with consumer services, you expect, it's not guaranteed, you expect that you are going to deal directly with the carrier. So you're talking to T-Mobile. T-Mobile is the carrier in this case. You get a phone from T-Mobile. There's no one in between. But with business phones, there's always someone in between. There's also generally not those carriers. There's much better carriers that aren't available to the normal public. And when you're dealing with a business class phone, so you get a phone. So as an example, Ring Central is a business class phone provider. Uh, Dialpad is business class. Talkadillo is business class. Things like that. And when you go to those providers, you can still go get one phone, you can still go get 10 phones, you can still have a number for each person, but they all are part of the company and the company can manipulate them in any way that they want. So there's this in-between layer between the carriers and the numbers and your business that is using them. And when you do that, you then have the ability to provide access to that in any way that you like. But importantly, all access to business class phones. Now keep in mind, like we said, with cell phones, you only use that for your data in a business context. Calls done by a cell phone are always consumer. Why? Because they are direct calls between the device and the carrier. There is no in-between. When you're dealing with business phones, calls, from your device, which could be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a terrible thing and grab this, and nothing on my desk is prepared for this, this is a huge mess. I have a desk phone, a regular, everyday, hopefully you can see it here, will it focus on it? Probably not. A regular, everyday desk phone on my super messy desk with my pink coffee cup. And this phone uses a technology that we call VOIP, or Voice Over Internet Protocol. What does Voice Over Internet Protocol mean? I put my orange cap back in the frame. There we go. I don't feel complete without orange cap. What this means is that these devices, all business class phone devices, by definition, are going to be computers. It could be your desktop. It could be your laptop. It could be the little computer that goes in your pocket. It could be an iPad. It could be something that is shaped like an old-fashioned phone, but is actually a computer. All of them are computers. All of them run what we call soft phones. That is software that allows you to place calls. All of those work over the internet. All. That doesn't mean most. That means all. Anything that does not work over the internet is not a business class phone. Anything that is going to make business class phones will work over the internet. That is how the world has worked for decades. This is not a new thing. So you're going to say, but there are landlines out there. Yes, there are. They still exist. They're generally sold as scams. Not 100% of the time, but almost. But there's no way that you can claim that they are business class. They are consumer class at best. They're barely even, that would be a struggle to even call them consumer. No consumer should be having traditional old landlines. There's also no lines in modern phones. Because calls are not delivered over dedicated lines. Now, this is where cell phones still have lines. There is a single line between your handset and the carrier. So these have lines. Consumers sometimes have lines. 
but businesses never have lines. They just have calls, just like with email. If you're sending an email in a business, you don't say, well, how many emails can, I, can we send? How many people can send emails? Well, obviously, it's unlimited. And you can send a whole bunch at once or just one at a time. And one person could send a ton or a ton of people could send one or a ton of people could send a ton. You don't really think about capacity because it's just as much data as the Internet can pass. Well, the same with phones, right? There's no, there's no built-in limits to the phone system. Some companies will try to bill you based on artificial limits. That's just an agreement between you and them. It's contractual. But real phones don't have lines. There's no such line concept in the phone. I can pick up this phone right here. Ooh, I've got all kinds of things in the way, right? I've got a dial tone. I can place a call on this, but the phone can, I can put someone on hold and make another call. I can put someone on hold and make another call. I can do it forever. I can have a thousand people making calls in the system. No problem. There's no lines behind the scenes. There's nothing limiting those calls other than the total capacity of the internet. So that is a really important concept that people tend to miss. That there tends to be this, well, but there must be lines. There isn't, right? Oh, but I talked to, there isn't. Someone may lie to you. A lot of salespeople will say the word because it's easy to understand and they think you'll get confused if they don't say it, right? They're not necessarily being malicious, but it does not exist, right? Whether it's accidentally dishonest or trying, you know, using an incorrect term, trying to help you understand. There's a lot of reasons that people say it, but there are no lines in phone systems, in, in business class phone systems, and have not been, right? All these things we're talking about since like 20, uh, 2002, uh, two. yeah, so like 22 years, right? Since these have been absolutely ubiquitous. So this is, it's a different world than people are imagining. People just don't think about phones. If you're not, if you work for a business and you, you would expect you have phone engineers who handle all this stuff for you and you never have to think about it. All you have to say is, am I paying too much? No, I have good phone engineers, I'm paying the right amount. Otherwise, you're gonna pay way too much. Consumers don't have to worry about these things. So it's not things that normal people think about, but when you deal with a business and you call them, you would know instantly, wait, this doesn't sound right. There's no hold music. This doesn't sound right. There isn't an IVR to press one, press two. There should always be a computer picking up first so I know I called the right place so they can control my hold, so they can find the right person for me to go to. I need to be able to dial the extension of the person that I know. I need to be able to drop a voicemail by command. I need to be able to select a different pattern. I need to be able to go back to the reception. I got to be able to hit zero to go to a person. There's all these things that you absolutely expect to have in a business phone system as someone calling a business. And if they're not there, it really flags. You're like, wait, something is wrong that this isn't right. So you, everyone has this expectation. We've learned what business phones are like, but when we're the ones buying or building the business phone systems, we, don't, we haven't thought about it consciously. And so it's really easy to get caught in this position of being like, well, no, it's just a cell phone, right? But no, cell phones don't do any of those things. And cell phones have really low audio quality when making cell calls. Cell calls use a, a, a compression algorithm known as GSM, and it sounds bad. You can make a call, you can hear people, but it doesn't sound good. Business phones don't use GSM really. They can, but you never would. Real business phones use much higher quality audio carriers and really good ones use things like Opus, which just do an amazing job, but not everyone does that, but the good ones do, right? It's a thing to look for if you're shopping around for phone systems, but so you're expecting high sound quality. Now, maybe your customers call on a cell phone and they don't notice you have a higher sound quality, but what if they don't? What if they call on a business phone system of their own or a house phone that just happens to be high quality? Or they use Wi-Fi calling from their cell phone. All those things switch off of GSM and go to really good high quality, high def codecs, and as they're called, the, the compression algorithms. And they're gonna be like, wait, everything sounds good except these people. Clearly, they're on a cell phone. And that does not, would you want to do business with a business and find out that they didn't have an office, they don't have a receptionist, they can't, all they have is a cell phone, and if that cell phone falls in the toilet, they're out of business. If that cell phone gets stolen, they're out of business. If their kids are playing video games on it, or the battery is dead, they're out of business. Using a cell phone indicates something's wrong in your business plan. With modern phones, you have unlimited flexibility not just in how you can write route calls, but if you noticed, we said all business phones, and it can be software that goes on your cell phone, so your cell phone physically can be used to make business calls, 
but using software on it, not making a cell call. It's a very different thing. A VoIP software that goes on your phone is different than making a call that is a cellular call. They're different animals. One is the number that is tied to your phone by an eSIM or by a SIM, and the other is just part of defined by software between you and your phone company. So you can use this, you can use your laptop, you can use your desktop, you can use your nice desk phone like I have sitting over here. And with that, the calls go over the internet. This means that if you're in your office, let's talk practically, let's say that you're a small insurance office and you're located in Nebraska. You go into the office and everybody has phones on their desks. And when they wanna make a call, they pick up the phone and they dial out. And whoever they call, the caller ID shows the number of the business. Not their home phone, not their personal cell phone, the business. And it doesn't matter if they called from software on their desktop, software on their cell phone, their desk phone, any of them show up the same. It shows up as whatever number is appropriate to identify the business. If someone calls back, it rings through the company phone system. Maybe it goes through an IVR, maybe it goes through reception. Maybe they have to dial an extension to get to you. Maybe you have a direct dial number and they can dial you directly. Many options. And they can be changed depending on time of day, for example. They can be changed based on holiday schedules, all kinds of things. If there's an emergency and you're having a big snowstorm, you can close the office and put it into a nighttime schedule and go home and have different behavior from your phone system. Those are requirements to be business class. All these things are base features that any business phone has. And just remember, lots of people will lie and say they have business phones. They do not if they don't have these things and many more. So all of these things, you're in the office. All of these calls are going over the internet. There's no phone system in the office. That's not how it works. There's phones like on your desk and on your software and things, but there's no phone system inside the office. We hope there should not be under normal circumstances. There's something somewhere and you call out to that and your calls go through and your office shuts down at night and you turn off the power and all the phones turn off and all the computers turn off and yet people can still call in. Why? Because there's a phone system somewhere and phone calls are not tied to devices that are turned off. So now you still have this presence of a company, even at night, even in a snowstorm, in, even in everything. But what if someone needs to answer? Well, someone may be at home. Maybe there's someone who's on call and they're working at home at night and they're able to take that call. Maybe they took a desk phone home. Maybe they have software on their cell phone and it's going to ring and they can answer, but they're answering the business. They're not answering their cell phone. If they open up their laptop and turn on their phone software on their laptop, they're able to answer those calls. Maybe they need to call other people to let them know about something that's going on. Ooh, uh, one of their vendors has a hot sale coming up in the morning on doggy beds and it's a chance to buy them in bulk. They gotta get the word out tonight. So they call from their laptop or they call from their software on their phone and they get a hold of their customers and say, look, one of our vendors has a huge sale on doggy beds in the morning, but they have limited stock. We need to place orders tonight. Can you do it? And when they call them, they're not calling from a cell number. When that phone rings, their customers look and say, ooh, that company is calling me. This is their main line, the same one that they would call during the day. It doesn't have to be a different line because it's a business phone system. We don't have these problems with business phone systems the way that you do if you use consumer phones. So they're able to call from home as if they're in the business because they are. The business doesn't have a location. Just like the internet, there are no locations. When you start doing voice over IP, voice over the internet, there's also no location. Your phone number is tied to a place. An American phone number goes through an American carrier. But how you get to that carrier goes over the internet, and the internet erases locations. I know a lot of people are going to try to tell you that the internet has locations, but they're wrong. The internet has supposed locations. They are only supposed. They don't actually exist. Nothing on the internet actually knows where you are physically. So when you go to make a call from home, it goes to your phone system, and your phone system contacts the carrier. The carrier has no way to know where you physically are because they're not talking to you. They're talking to your phone system, your phone system that exists in the cloud. So your phone system might have a guess as to where you are because it knows a little, a little bit about your internet identity, but only a little bit. It can't prove where you are. It can only make assumptions, but it wouldn't need to. It's your phone system. Why would it do that? It wouldn't. That would be crazy. So your phone system is able to take a call for you from anywhere. It gives it to the carrier from its central location. And to put this into concrete things, my own phone system that I use every day, the one that my phone on my desk connects to, is located in Miami. It then connects to a carrier in Oregon. 
And as far as the government is concerned, the call is an Oregon call because that is where the carrier terminates it. And it doesn't matter where my phone system is hosted. It could be hosted anywhere in the world. It just happens to be in Miami, and I just happen to know that. That's not something you ever need to know. You don't ever need to ask. Don't ever ask that. That is inappropriate to ask. There's no reason for you to ever know. Most phone carriers couldn't tell you anyway. Not phone carriers. Most phone companies couldn't tell you anyway. I mean, they could track someone down and find out, but they don't just know. I happen to know that mine is based in Miami. It used to be based in Dallas. But it is the carrier and their termination point that matters to the phone call. So it's going through, it is, you know, in my case, my number is a New York number, upstate New York, not the city. It is a 607 number. And that number terminates to a physical point of presence in Oregon. And that is when it's handed off to the government. And to the government, it is an American call. It doesn't matter anything else. It is an American call. It is an American phone number. And its physical point of presence is, uh, is Oregon. End of story. No ifs, ands, or buts. That, the phone system, is located in Miami, 100% irrelevant. Completely. It could be located in Santiago. It could be located in Berlin. It could be located in Tokyo. It could be located in Moscow. Does not matter. You do want it to be located in a place that's stable, with good electricity and good internet. <laughs> right? Like there's, there's things that matter. But physically where it is does not matter to the carrier. So you already have this separation. Your calls are American calls if you have an American number with an American carrier. So, logically, just like anything else, I could go on vacation and keep making calls. And people do this every day. Everyone with a business phone system has the capability for their employees to go travel, whether they're working out of a hotel, whether they're on the road to another office, whether they are on vacation in the Caribbean and they're in Aruba and they're laying on the beach and, and suddenly you just need them to make a sales call because it's going to close a million dollar account, does not matter. And no matter where they are, as long as they have internet access, they can get to their phone system and their phone system connects to the carrier. So you have this unlimited capability to be anywhere 100% of the time. So logically, if you're going to move to, in our case, Nicaragua, a business phone system, that exist in the United States with a U.S. number has no reason to care, no ability to know for sure that you're in Nicaragua. It is your phone system. It is your business product. It's not, it's not your choice to cut yourself off. There's no reason to do that. So you could be anywhere and nothing changes. This is why we say with business phones, nothing changes. We were a U.S.-based company. We had phones all over the U.S. When we moved into Latin America, we didn't have to make a change for that. We didn't have to accommodate that. We didn't have to plan for that. We didn't have to do anything because we had business phones. And I know thousands of companies that we work with every day, and they're all in exactly the same boat. Whether it is that they had a fire at their factory and they need to open a new factory down the street and they just need to move a little bit down the street, or they're closed for the day and they need people to work from home, or they hired a remote assistant who lives in the Philippines and they need to be able to make calls through the company line and answer calls through the company line. They need to transfer calls to and from the main office to the CEO who's at home, to the CFO who's laying on a beach in Aruba. All of them are still in the office as far as the phone system is concerned, and they will always be in the office. They can lay on the beach in Aruba, take the call, and say, wait, I think you also need to talk to accounts receivable. They're in Malaysia. Hold on, let me see if they're awake. He calls over and transfers the call. Transfers, like a business, suddenly to Malaysia. And this isn't weird stuff. This isn't hard stuff. This is every single company in the world with a business phone system and people at home with a business phone system. I have a personal line like this with my father. And you can move these calls around no problem, all the time. So if you have a business phone system, you're doing a business in the United States to answer Andrew's question. Once you have a business phone, just like your email, right? Imagine if we we're having the same conversation about email. Well, Scott, look, I, I know email's important. I've got my email set up. We've been using email for the business, but now we're moving to Nicaragua. I got to get a Nicaragua email address so that they can, people would say, what are you talking about? What's a Nicaraguan email address? Email addresses are global. 
Well, phone systems are too. The phone numbers themselves have a national identity for the moment, which is a crazy idea because it doesn't mean anything really, but they do. And so we have this weird carrier country-based phone number system that's super quirky and doesn't really mean anything and anybody can get a number anywhere if they work at it. But in theory, they have that. But once you get to business class phones, there is an additional layer that's, that completely breaks all of that. So my own company, we have numbers in the US. We also have numbers in Mexico. We have numbers in several different countries. And it all goes through the same phone system, which is just happens to be in Miami, but that's irrelevant. And when we make calls, depending on the behavior that we make a call, it will go out through the system in the U.S. or it will go through a carrier in Mexico, as an example. When people call us, it comes in through the point that they dial because each one has a different number or set of phone numbers. I don't want to get into too many details and make this too crazy. The point of all this is just like email, if you're going to be working outside the country, you don't need a new email address every time you visit a new country. If you're going to be doing business calls, you don't need a new phone system every time you travel to a new country. If you have business phones and business email, any email and business phones, you can go anywhere in the world, anytime, and all of your calls just work. I don't mean they kind of work. I don't mean you can find a way to make them work. I mean they just work. Your phone system does not know you left the country. It does know you moved. It knows this is where they were, and they're not there now. They're somewhere else. But it can't technically tell the difference between if you are next door or around the world. It also can't tell if you didn't move but turned on a VPN to pretend that you moved. It can't tell the difference. So that's all it knows is that a new address has been assigned to you and that's how you're being identified. So beyond just the same move as anywhere else, that's all there is. So when we're talking about businesses in Nicaragua, businesses anywhere in the world, if you're using, and this is where as, as a business consultancy, right, this blows my mind that there's a business out there that didn't have this solved so long ago. Every single business phone system, all you have to do is take the software on your laptop, take the desktop that I have. And this is what I did. This phone that is on my desk is the same phone that was on my desk in Texas four years ago. When we came to Nicaragua, I simply unplugged it from Texas, put it in my luggage, came here, got some dirty looks at customs, did not get charged for it, came here, plugged it in, and instantly my exact same extension with my exact same phone number with, and nobody from the outside world can tell that I moved at all, except that I talk about it a lot. But you cannot tell from the phone system. That is an important power that you always need with business phones. You never want to be in a situation where you're like, I'm sorry, we can't do business with you right now. I forgot to charge my cell phone. You don't ever want to be in a position where you're like, I can't transfer you anywhere. I answered this on a personal call. I can't, I can't put you back into the system. You don't want those things to happen. And you don't want to be tied to a physical location. Oh, I can't afford new staff because I tied my phone system to a physical location and now they have really high taxes or there's no one available to work there. There's no reason for this person to sit there, but they're stuck with a phone system that doesn't allow complete mobility. Right? Oh, this person could work here, but they need to be home one day a week. Those are crazy things to run into in this day and age. And running into them means you didn't have a business phone system. Business phone systems protect businesses in so many ways. There's a reason why. Anything less would not be considered a business phone in any fashion, right? And these things are so easy. It's so cheap. There's companies that will provide these for like less than $30, around about $30 a month. Real cost, right? That you could have a full-blown business phone system for like one user, right? For like $30 a month. If you're like a 10-person company, you should be in like the well below 300, right? Probably below 200. Maybe, maybe right around 200 for 10 users. You get above to, it just gets cheaper and cheaper as you get bigger. These are real world numbers for real companies to have real, and these are American calling numbers, right? American calling volumes. So keep that in mind when you're talking about moving down. Whether you're a business yourself or you want to, you're willing to spend a little bit of money to act like a business, then you can have all these features for you and your family, for you and your business. And you should have them before you move. If you're a business and you don't have these things, figure this out, right? If you're, if you're looking to talk to someone, email me, right? All that information is down there. But there are companies that do this. This is not hard. It is not challenging. Everybody who wants to sell you super high-cost consumer services 
will act like business services are too hard or too expensive. And then they sell you something that costs double, right? That's always how it works. But business stuff is very often super cheap. And if it's not super cheap, it's generally because it saves you so much money that it pays for itself and, there, and no one is worried about it being any cheaper because you can always afford it because it's making you able to do business. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny expense to be looking at when it comes to making your business powerful. So hopefully that's enough. Comments, questions down below, let me know what I missed. But all of your calls go over the internet. Nothing cares where you are. Nothing knows for sure where you are. There's no trick to this. You don't have to have a VPN. You don't have to have all the specialty stuff. There isn't any technical knowledge here. This is any business phone just does this 100% transparently. In fact, business phones do not know where your office is. That's a really important part of this, right? It's not most of the phones are in the office and some work other places. Your phones work from everywhere, and it to the phone systems, your office is just another random location. It doesn't know what you think the office is. That's something in your mind that you have added as an additional constraint to your phone system, but it's not real. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Comments, questions down below. As always, watch another episode, and I will see all of you tomorrow.